Welcome to the Ports Garrison. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Greetings and welcome to the Ports Garrison. I am Phil Lepoy. Now, if you join us for the first time and you like the content, please subscribe to the channel, share it, and like the content as well. Now, last week, um, Tuesday, I'm sitting up the Parliament, House of Representatives in Jamaica, the government introduced a bill to once again postpone the holding of the local government election. And the government used its majority in numbers to pass the bill. Now, different reasons were given by the government as to why this postponement was necessary. And the opposition didn't take a liking to this reasoning. For, what, for me personally, the reason didn't make much sense either. Naming of Fort Moore as a, as a, a parish, um, the cost and the impact of COVID, it just did not sit well, it didn't make any sense. Now, here is Minister McKenzie at the end of his presentation speaking as to seeking, rather, um, support for the bill. Take a look. Speaker, but I urge, Madam Speaker, the patience of the country to understand and respect the decision of the government for the postponement of the elections, Madam Speaker. I thank you. Now, as I said, the bill was passed and the opposition in protest walked out of Parliament and, and the, the government actually made a mockery of the whole Parliament, um, to me that is, after the walkout where George Wright sat in the opposition leader's chair at the prompting of members of the government. Um, however, um, having seen the, the defence of the opposition um, to the bill, I thought to myself that the Senate must be the, 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 the Senate of Congress of the Senate must be rather awesome. So I made a, a, a plan to watch it. However, when I started watching it, I missed the start of it and I saw the closing of Senator Matthew Samuda's presentation. Now, as usual, um, Matthew is always trying to grab some horse after his boat in the gate, and I, I saw his, his back and forth with um, Senator Damon Crawford was continuing as he tried to rebut something that Senator Crawford had said here. Take another look. The final point, Mr. President. The final point, Mr. President. Is in relation... You should. The final, the final, the final, the final point, Mr. President, I was particularly disappointed in the content in closing of my friend and colleague's presentation, Senator Crawford. I believe in closing, though asked in the form of a question, as I understand, you flew in the face of the intent, the intention, and the spirit of the standing orders. It was most egregious, and I found it to be against the spirit of what we do here. Because it called into question the character of the entire government side here and in the other place. And it ascribed motive where there is none. Now, you, also, you made a particular statement as it relates to a matter of national debate and national concern as it relates to bankrolling of the JLP by SSL. Now, it's egregious, it's unfortunate, it is untrue, and I reject it. It is hurtful to the people who have lost their money because of fraud by people unconnected to this side. And I, for one, am offended. It is not the case, and it should be rejected. And the truth is, Senator, you should withdraw it. You should withdraw it. No, you should. The reality, Mr. President, Mr. President, we use these terms when we're debating politically. This love for democracy, this commitment to how we finance, elections. 
And we throw out things in the way Senator Crawford threw out things. And I think it was unfortunate. And I think it should be withdrawn because you know it not to be the case. Having watched um, Matty's presentation, I had to go back and, on YouTube and find the, the part one of the presentation because I'd missed Senator Crawford's presentation. So I wanted to see what he had to say and, and what had drawn the ire of, of um, Senator Samuda. So I went back and I looked at Senator Crawford who shredded the government to bits. Um, he beat and he taught them. He beat and teach, as I would say. Um, now, it's a rather lengthy presentation, so what I want to do is to split it into two parts. It's so now here, take a seat and listen to part one of the Senator's presentation. Senator Damon Crawford. Mr. President, I, I, I must admit that I'm looking forward to the local government debates because my good mayor here is on form. Um, and, and, and prepared. I thought at one point that the election was going to be called because he was on a serious, serious campaign. I think Prime Minister Olness also meant it when he was told, call it Andrew, call it in 2011. And having called it, what was expected to be a landslide victory became a landslide defeat. But, and young people time. But equally, whether or not side A or side B will be successful is not a basis for calling an election. Maybe it is true that the PMP should not want an election, but that's not a basis for calling an election. Maybe it's factual that the JP will win landslide, but that's not a basis for calling an election. The basis of calling an election is based on a principle that people should be heard and that your performance should be judged. If it is found that your performance in the market, in Papine, was worthy of votes in Papine, it will recur to your benefit. If it is found that the, the what's her name, um, Senator Venetia Phillips, who is the PMP councillor, who is the PMP's um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making some proposals. This, yes, yeah, Delhi have surprised me, I must say. But if it is <laughs> that uh, Councillor Venetia Phillips was perceived by the people to be the key practitioner, it will resound to her or the PMP's benefit. But none of that is the reason for calling an election. In fact, I put it to you that the people in constant spring market yes. that you took away yes, and displaced yes, they may want to vote against That's right. though the people in wherever else may want to vote for well you say it's in action because maybe you have the document of their agreement but I also have the demonstrations that they amounted against it in action and so therefore agreement is not only in words agreement is also in action we have before us some arguments since tuesday that has been polluted with lies and deception stink of disrespect and rank with delusions of grandeur. Because what you're putting forward, your intellect is not sufficient to take everybody for food. You'd have to be intellectually superior to a level unquestioning that anything you say, regardless of how ridiculous it is, is naturally accepted because you can spin a tail better than everybody else. I'm going to first look at what is the reasons being proposed and put to the public and to the pile, to the Senate, that these reasons are not sufficient. I don't know the full details of 2003. In 2003, I was at the university. I wasn't a full participant in politics. But equally, nothing suggests that 2003 had to be correct. 
And the way I learn it is that reversed unfairness is not fairness. So if it is that you unfortunately had to wait 10 years, the reverse is not fair. That is you. But we should do a survey to see if no one had a problem with it. In fact, if we should follow the arguments of the JLP, which needs a time machine, then when they change the law for the, 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 the murder law, or the firearms law, and the judge said 40 years for murder, the person in front of the judge should say, but how oh, John did get him? That 40 years shouldn't apply. Because in 2016 and 27 and 2093 and, and 92, uh, Mary got six, so oh, me forget 40. And the judge will rightly say that you're getting 40 because things have changed and times have changed. They're getting 40 because the law has changed. That's right. And that law change was in full agreement with the Jamaica Labour Party. But the Jamaica Labour Party and its leadership is not true. And notice I didn't say not truthful. But to the principles that they expose, they're not true. Now I see everybody is in support of three in one and two in one and and combination um combo package um go large with the referendum now in 2020 there was the ability to combo because in 2020 local government selection would have become due where was everybody knocking the table in the ears of the prime minister who called the general election prior to its duty? Why wasn't it combined then when the uncertainty of the times were greater than now? I don't want to be distracted. I'm still at Portmore. I hear the minister Arnaldo Turla. Alando, who is in East Central St. Catherine. He claims that one reason for the delay is that there are some areas within his constituency that isn't represented by the Portmore mayor. I don't understand what's the problem with that. Because they are represented by a mayor. The St. Catherine Mayor. In fact, I've never seen a conversation about people that have nothing to do with the people. The truth is that the JLP wants the St. Catherine Council yes. for which if the PMP holds Portmore as a part of St. Catherine, they will unlikely get. And the PMP wants to maintain St. Catherine Council for which if Portmore is not a part, they might not keep. The whole quarrel around Portmore have nothing to do with Portmore. Wait a minute. You don't have a house in Portmore, you know, so you can't talk to me. I am a citizen of Portmore. Now, hold on, now. hold on. He claims, hold on, man. You're, yes. He claims, one debate at a time. I see you going hard, but you know. He claims, Senator, uh, Minister Arnaldo, Arnaldo Turnham, friend of mine, half a tree primary, that those two seats are underrepresented if we should go with an election at this time. But for some reason, the JLP has decided to sacrifice 15 areas without representation for a improved, in their minds, representation of two places with representation. Let me tell you the 15 places that have no representation at present that are people not less deserving than what you claim for Portmore. I'm going to give you the 15. Oh, 
Okay. In St. James, Catadupa, the counselor was removed by default due to absenteeism. When Charlie was making that statement, Charlie, when, when Senator Sinclair was making that statement, remember when he was leading that action, he suggested at the time that in short order, the people will receive, um, not by election, representation. In, in short order, make we talk. In St. James, Cambridge, no, you, I said Catadupa first. But Cambridge is now serving as an MP. That was a former mayor. Omar is now serving as a mayor. The people have no representation in Cambridge. Some people will claim that when the person is removed, the mayor steps in. It was not the intent of the law for the mayor into perpetuity. For one, the mayor has his own area to represent. Additionally, for two, nobody voted for the mayor. Well, we don't know. You don't predict economic uncertainty. Economic uncertainty. I don't know if Russia going to invade Germany next. You don't predict economic uncertainty. You don't predict if another wave of COVID comes. So it wasn't intended for three years and four years and five years. This is what is happening. In St. James, Salt Spring, removed by default due to absenteeism. So in St. James, in St. James, well, on a man, in St. James, President, Sir President, give me some protection. In St. In St. James, not only three unrepresented, the mayor now has four divisions that he must oversee with no knowledge of the people and no vote by the people. At least if it was Portmore, the directed elected would have received some support from those people in those areas. He has none. Let me go again. In Westmoreland, so we got three. White House, that councillor, Mr. President, has resigned. In Petersfield, that MP is now the JLP's representative and a member of parliament. That councillor is now a member of parliament. In Manchester, not Patrick, that councillor has died. In St. Elizabeth, none of them is there, sorry. In St. Catherine, Greater Portmore East, that councillor have died. In Point Hill, that councillor have died. In Spanish Town, that councillor have resigned. I think also migrated. Yes. Sorry, sorry, resigned and I think migrated. In Spanish Town. <laughs> um, in Clarendon, Mineralites, that councillor have died. In St. Mary, Retreat, now serving as an MP. In Trinityville, that councillor have died. In fellowship, that councillor have died. In Fairy Hill, that councillor have died. To this point, 14. When you put undue stress, now the, the mayor from Kingston may not understand the requirements because in Kingston I see none so maybe that is why you don't recognize that importance now let I tell you from my experience my experience within certain constituencies there are differences so stark 
that local representation is the only true viable way to represent their true and total interests. I draw an East Rural St. Andrew, for example. Harborview is so different from Mavis Bank that Mavis Bank needs someone who understands. Let me tell you what happened when there is a hurricane in East Rural St. Andrew. A hurricane in East Rural St. Andrew have landslide in the hills, Mavis Bank and Garden Town. Look at Jesus. It has flooding in the center, Kintyre. And it has storm surge on the flat, Dallas and Harborview. A person must be equipped to deal with all three. And many times a single person cannot understand all three. So, find. I won't tell you about the computer center that was left to go into derelict and disrepair. I won't tell you about the park that was left to go into disrepair. I won't tell you about the education programs that were thrown up and discarded, the night schools. I'm saying that there are areas that I depended even on the JLP council yeah. to understand, yo, Shine, what's the situation? Very, very challenging. You know, of areas where those people don't have representation. I hear Councilor Sinclair say, oh God, he go from 2005 and he's been fighting and he don't get the land. You have got to tell him where you get the land because you gave it to the um, <laughs> parliament. But I'm saying that, that there are 40. There are 40. Yeah, teach him, teach him, teach him. Teach him. Because if he don't get the land, there are 40 about him. So make sure you're sure about to get the land. And give him some too with the way up. There are 14 without a person that can make equal representation. That a person that they cannot go to to say, let us try this or that or the other. There are 14 at this point. And even if your opinion is that some underperformed, that is one of the outcomes of an election that I can choose not to keep those who underperform. I hear this foolishness that Portmore need to be a parish. The local government election does not prevent Portmore from being a parish. It does not prevent Portmore from being a parish. But I go further. What did you say? What did he say? People support his inaction. What he said? PJ said? I can't even remember. All right, that's what he said. No, I don't remember what you said. Because you know we do put people first. So therefore, when you say put people first, is in action. A reasonable action is to run a referendum within this local government for Portmore to say if they want to be a parish and how they want to be represented if they are a parish. You have not done that. You have a consultation with 28 people over three consultations. And you... And you know what I love with the JLP? When them said not true, it might be 29. It might be 30. Like, no, one man did pass through at 12, and then he left. But it wasn't 200. It was not 215. So when you talk about combined referendum, Portmore should have the ability, not based on the fight over St. Catherine, to say, we want to be a parish. And if we're a parish, we want direct elections or no direct elections. Or we want whatever, we don't know. Why is it that for Portmore, you have delayed an election when to be a parish Portmore isn't prevented? It's not being prevented. Equally, you want to tell me that your agenda one, Portmore, is more important than your agenda two, the economy? You have placed that the order of priority. All right. I thought I did one here. I just wanted confirmation. Because if you don't know, you don't go meet him. If, no, but wait. If Portmore is not priority one, then how long we have to wait on the economy priority two? If Portmore is not priority one, then how long do we have to wait on 
what this is? High level of global uncertainty. Which is, which is, which is nobody knows. So even okay, we soon come to that. We soon come to that. So even if no, but wait, no. Yeah, man, we soon deal with the context of COVID-19 because we had a general election within the context of COVID-19. Good. At the peak. Okay. All right, let us use a more refined word. There is uncertainty about your timeline because there is none other than Portmore that you have control over. You have no control. All right. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why there's uncertainty. Let me tell you why there's uncertainty. One second. Mr. President, there must be uncertainty within proposed dates if proposed reasons are not in control of the people proposing the dates. So if you say one reason is that there is global uncertainty, you are not in control of global uncertainty. So therefore, you cannot predict with any certainty, by extension given uncertainty, to when this will be removed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've also heard the JLP claim, in particular Senate, uh, Minister Turlan, that with this change, the people in those two areas will then get full representation under Portmore. I don't know how he came to that conclusion because the boundaries have not yet been defined. There is nothing to suggest that where he is will not be in St. Catherine. So unless the JLP have predetermined boundaries, I don't know how they come to a conclusion. Because a community... Let me give you something where... Stop, stop this term. Let's go, let's go. Make I hear you. All right. So there's no way because of what? Because peace of it can't. Hold on. Hold on. Mr. President. Mr. President. The only method of which disqualifies a court is cross parish. That's the only method. That Kingston cannot go into St. Thomas. Clarendon cannot go into St. Catherine. That's the only thing that disqualifies. No. There is no, there is no port more. There is no, there is no actual boundary where that two areas that he speaks of doesn't fall in the current boundary of port more. Do I really have to yield, Mr. President? I'll soon tell you. Yes, yes. Yes, Senator Rodriguez Campbell, Campbell Rodriguez. Senator, please do not mislead. Senator Roderick, it's Campbell. Thank you. Senator, continue, please. Uh, absolute ridiculous. I have to respond. No. Portmore as is. One minute. Senator Brown, would you give Senator Crawford a chance to complete his presentation, please? And, and education, not just presentation, education. Po Portmore as is is not a parish. So Portmore cannot have parish boundaries. Indeed, an argument put forward is that the, 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 the re-boundary effort is a part of what makes it necessary to decide where people will fall after the election. So therefore, if it is that Portmore is not yet a parish, there can be no actual basis to say those in St. Catherine cannot be in Portmore and those in Portmore cannot be in St. Catherine because Portmore is not yet a part. And that was stated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. They say a word to the wise is sufficient, but a libel to the foolish is a disrespect. All I'm saying is that what you put here don't make sense. 
The high level of uncertainty in the global economy and the economic environment, which may have domestic implications, requires government to focus at this time at building resilience to possible future shocks as well as setting the country on a path to sustain growth. I don't see how that, our local government stops that. I'm not sure if the Minister of Finance is a candidate in the local government. I'm not sure if the Prime Minister is a candidate in the local government. It seems they're saying that because they will feel a duty to campaign, that that duty will be prioritized over their responsibilities as ministers, yes. and therefore, by extension, will put the country at risk. That's a ridiculous argument. Absolutely. But let us look at some countries that had elections in the global uncertainty. In the global uncertainty, Barbados had election, weren't they in the same global? Dominica had election, yeah. not in the same global. Yeah, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, no. Grenada, Antigua, no. they had election. They're they not Guyana. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Jamaica. Where's the global wasn't worse then? So no principle. What you are putting forward is untruthful and malicious and unable to be accepted but additionally in times of crisis the people should be allowed to choose who leads them in that times of crisis in times of crisis on the basis that we choose who lead you the people should decide who take up them garbage in times of crisis because for now garbage has not been prioritized by that government the people should be able to say who delivers their rural water in times of crisis. So what is this basis that if there is a crisis, then we should now move from a democracy to an autocracy until the crisis ends? Is that what number three is saying? You say you are not calling it because you have a crisis being faced. No. The other thing I want to know is if local government is less important than general, central government. Well, the country needs to hope that it is so. Because if it is not so, then these same arguments may be used for general elections as well. Because if local government is of equal importance to general elections, then the arguments being used for the constant delay may be extended to the general election. The same global environment, the same uncertainty, the same cost. Thanks for watching.